Hey, this is Mike Lindsay from Vital MX. We're out here at Glen Helen Raceway today. And as you can see by me, we have a YZ450 we've been testing with some data acquisition system on. This is actually a portion of more of a full review we're doing on a company called MotoClick. Um, basically, we're testing, they have a data system for both the fork and shock, measuring shaft speeds, just the typical data that you would find in these systems. This is a little bit more of like a consumer friendly one, but along the way, they've also updated their system to have an AI function to actually give you recommendations of what to do. And I thought that would be the most interesting thing to like discuss because we see the term AI pop up on basically everything. Now, every product in the world is coming out with something that says AI. So what is that in this product? And can an AI actually help you make suspension decisions? So I got my buddy Joe Carlino here. Actually, Joe used to be the guy behind the camera for most of these testing videos a long time ago. But Joe has a lot more experience than me with suspension testing stuff because he's done um, a lot of mountain bike stuff. You have a lot of day systems on your personal mountain bikes, a little bit on dirt bikes you've had systems. So you're like the general consumer that is really nerded out and wanted to see if you could make that relatable information and actually make decisions from it. Uh, so starting off, you've been playing with the system, like just the basic dashboard on what does their base system pick up? Like, what is it telling you? So this system is great because it's really easy to install on the bike. It's easier than other systems you might see factory KTM using where they have like potentiometers or strings yeah. on their bikes and on the shock. Uh, this, you don't have to take, really they take the bike apart, your fork leg has to come off and then you can install that, but the rear shock can stay on, which is great. Um, it gives you, position of your fork and shock. It gives you speeds of your fork and shock, of shaft speed, compression and rebound. And it will also be a lap timer, GPS, and you can also do segments like uh, like a Lip Pro actually. So a cool part with doing this test is you just got back from the Pacific Northwest up riding at Washougal. You'd kind of tweak your bike to set up for Washougal. Your bike is definitely not stock. You've got B-Kit, basically KYB Enzo stuff. You got clamps, engine mounts. You're, you're a tweaker, a tuner kind of guy. But this bike was set for Wash Google, brought to GH today. You start at that base setting. I've also never ridden your bike. So we each rode it, picked up the data, which you have to do two full laps um, for it to collect enough data for it to tell you a recommendation. We each did that and then saw what it each told us to do. So basically once you put in your two laps, it finishes processing and it uploads it. What's the next step? Like what does it tell you? Yes, to do? so you came in and, or I came in. So we come in off the track and you download your data takes maybe about 30 seconds. You put your in point uh, where your lap starts and then just go to suspension and then the AI function. In there, you have to tell the AI if it's a hard pack track or sand track and then what your sensitivity level is. We kind of went in the middle today just to appease both sides. And then you just hit... Uh, I calculate what, basically. Yeah, you just hit calculate and then it just gives you um, suggestions. like. It will tell you two clicks stiffer compression, three clicks slower rebound, for example. Um, and I think this has its place for riders that sometimes you just don't know which direction to go. Like you could hit a bump and it kick back at you and you're like, oh, my rebound is fast. But you, like, you know, it, it could just be your fork is too soft and you're compressing and pushing back. Like you, you know, there's so many ways to skin the cat on it where the AI kind of sets you in a direction for a user to try. Yeah, I think what we both had is similar initial feedback from the uh, from it, but I think also cost each off guard. Like um, it initially recommended for both of us to a different degree to go stiffer, but slower on our re stiffer on our compression on our forks, but slower on our forks. And it's interesting because you you almost had the forks all the way stiff already from Washu, who said it was really tacky while you were up there. So I tried the recommendation. I went quite a bit, pretty mass amount slower. We went like four or five clicks slower. Um, we maxed out compression, like three clicks more is all we actually had left. And I could see its point. Like I said, it be, for what it's weighing, it's a very performance driven answer in a way. Um, like me personally, if I would have got off the bike, I would have came back and just gone probably softer on compression because I felt like the, the fork was topped out, very stiff, very deflective feeling. Like I said, AI looked at it as, oh, the rebound's too quick. It's not allowing it to settle enough. And it was right in a sense. I, at least for my, me, the slower rebound recommendation was a positive, but it's still going stiffer. The only place it helped was like, we had big downhills there. So it must've been reading data based off the hits on the downhill. So it was better on the hills, but it was kind of catch 22 everywhere else. But the rebound function, I will say, cause some people struggle with that. Like 
I'd say compression is a little more straightforward to people. Still, some people don't know if they're too soft or too stiff because they think harsh is stiff, but it could actually be really soft. Rebound, though, a lot of people don't know if faster or slower is uh, a good idea. A lot of people seem to go slower because they think things kick a lot. I typically like a fast fork, so I very rarely would go slower, and it was actually right in that sense. However, I also went back and did the opposite of what it told me, and I went really soft on the fork, and that was, I will say, I could push harder on its recommendation, but my own feeling of what I did was more comfortable. And I think that's the interesting part, because the AI seems to have a single mindset of performance, but it's not asking you questions. And that, that's the one thing like everybody goes, oh, suspension's a weird black art. You got a guy asking a bunch of questions on a piece of paper. But sometimes there's also the question of performance versus comfort. Yeah, and I think using this system to get you in a direction, you make the change, you go out, and then you ask it again what to change. And are you going the right way or not the right way? And I think that could be a great learning tool. Like if I don't go out and ride with you, maybe I wouldn't learn because I don't have ideas to bounce off. So in a sense, it's a little Michael Lindsay in, a, in an app. The, the, the airframe one we talked about is like, I don't think we give pro riders enough credit for this. You ride your thing three or four tracks like we do in SoCal, you kind of know what to expect. You go somewhere else, the bike responds drastically different in very different materials. And if you don't have that experience, yeah, it does. Again, I think it's really good in the sense of if you really just, I hate to say the words, have no clue, it just have no direction to go off of, I think it can steer you to a good baseline. But like I said, at a certain point, like, okay, I did what it told me to, and then I re-ran it, and it wanted me to go even farther that direction. Because it looked at, again, I think it's looking at so performance-driven, it's like, okay, I was able to go faster, so now it's reading it again as, oh, the fork's deep again, like, you could go stiffer because I went farther, but I'm like, eh. I need, to, I need to split the margin difference I need to, to find. Like I said, it showed me a direction that worked, but then my mindset from there was, okay, how do I get the performance, but with the comfort and start kind of meandering from there. Yeah, the direction is going the right way. I think we found that there wasn't a limit to it. Um, like there wasn't a, um, a target we were trying to hit, which is uh, maybe something that I would like in the, in the end. Or we were saying, can we have a comfort setting and a performance setting? You know, and, and I guess that's where the sensitivity comes in. If we go to 10, that's a race setting. If we go to a one on the app, yeah. that, that they'll see that one might be more of the comfort setting. Yeah. So I guess the joke I brought at the beginning is like AI, can AI help you tune your suspension? I'd say yes and no. Like it's not traditional AI. Like if you've played around on the internet and you just keep feeding info to an AI, like again, it only has so much data you can feed it, which is so performance driven. It's really kind of, it, it, it comes across more out like, a lot of people think of AI and they think of this computer thinking for itself and, and learning and all this stuff. It just kind of comes across more as like an algorithm in a sense. Like it, it knows what data points to look at and based on data points, it knows what recommendation to give you. But I don't like, it's not like having a back and forth conversation with somebody that's knowledgeable about suspension in the sense of you're just throwing a data, you're not really, you're not giving it data, you're not giving it information and receiving it back. like you know, when you would think the word AI. Again, that's always joke, kind of like that's like a tagline for a lot of products now. Um, but the simple answer is, can something that's AI or algorithm based help you set up your suspension? It can give you a direction. I think it can teach you. Like, again, if you're just really, you don't know what the heck it's doing, it can kind of teach you that like, hey, you may be absolutely in the wrong ballpark in the sense of, like I said, I may have came off and just tried softer, which would have accomplished some of my goals, but the rebound recommendation was really big. Uh, but like I said, it also wasn't perfect in my sense. I don't think it sent me down the perfect road, what I needed, but it kind of gave me a direction to go off of. So compared to other data systems I've used, this one is a lot easier to read and to get to the point on the first day. I do, I can say that, and it gets me in the direction faster than I would have with the other ones, where it just gives you numbers. Yeah. This one is at least telling you to go in a direction. Um, I think if you wanted the system and you dove in and used the AI and learned about it and read about it and went on the track and tried different things, I think this could be something for you. So that's the last question I actually said. You have experience with some like way more extensive units that are just strictly much more da pure data driven and have basically, the, again, the type of systems closer to what a race team would use. Um, however, my experience, even when I had gone over some of that data with teams in the past, is it takes a lot of learning and time to learn how to interpret. It's just data. You have to learn how to interpret it. So the simple fact is, I was lucky enough today, you've already set this all up and you have a lot of knowledge in playing with them. 
However, as a base consumer, can they expect to go buy something like this and just instantly the first day be like, I know more about suspension? Or do you, is there also like a learning curve with using data systems to make you a better suspension guy? Yeah, I, I still think using this system, there is a learning curve. I think you could put it on your bike and the first day get more out of it than say um, one of the other competitors, because like you said, those are just numbers. Um, but it's gonna take time, you know, and I think that's the biggest misconception about any kind of data acquisition system is like, took me months of trying in different settings, trying in different settings, reading data, and then you get an answer, you know, uh, and rider input is still huge. It's not just AI or just data. I think it's gotta be a mixture between the both. Anyways, that was the part I thought would be interesting to discuss here. If you have any questions or any thoughts or just, I guess, interest in where technology is going and like how it could apply to data or apply to moto, throw it in the comment section below, of course, and I'll either answer or maybe we can all discuss it. But for this actual product, MotoClick will have an actual RIN review up on the site. As soon as it is, I will pin it in the comments from this video, but it will be a couple weeks after this this video goes up to kind of go through basically as a consumer trying to use this, again, to how's the whole data system work? That was just AI, like it is interesting to me. Like it's, it's just as everything in the world keeps moving, and all these little gadgets that keep coming on our dirt bikes, I've been kind of waiting, especially, we have all this stuff going on with engines and mapping and everything. Suspension is still the biggest like black art to some people, just the biggest mystery. And yet it's where most of our performance is like hidden. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we go out and do an 80, a lap at 80% effort or 100% effort, like you can almost have two different suspension settings. But could this data app show us what to do in those scenarios? Like that's kind of interesting. As always, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.